Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living and retirement worth having. What I'm amazed about today is the number of people, whether they're American-born or foreign-born, who feel they have rights to hack a phone or ruin a computer from a distance. It's a mental illness, in truth, to believe I'm going to be in power over you. The illness of people is thinking they have rights to do things to them. The illness of people is thinking I have the right to put my hands in your pockets in the middle of the night or put my hands down your pants and touch your privates. The illness and the mental illness of these people is off charts today. The fact that an old man cannot be safe on a campus of a college community is outrageous today. The fact that blacks play in to try to solicit all day long is a little bit annoying to me as much as it is to others, but I am a man who runs a ministry, and my ministry feeds people. But some lying blackguard decided to put their hands in my pants and ruin my thumb drives. They've stolen photographs. They've hacked pictures of my dead and late son. They've done things to ruin my photographs of myself and my wife, and they just think they're having a marvelous time. The problem is that those photos were the only ones I have. And the truth is that other people have stolen other things from me. So who gives you the right in any part of your life to take your photographs from you? And maybe I've said that incorrectly and maybe I've misspoken, but the truth is it's an illness to think you have any rights to any other human being. There is a universal declaration of, well, human rights. And what it says quite clearly is no one has ownership over anyone else. Long gone are the days of slavery and sexual inappropriateness in the third world areas of the world, and yet our American white bastard men and other colors of other lands like to go to third world countries for their problems and for their ability to use money to buy what they want in bed. That's all I'm going to say about that aspect of sexual trafficking, but here's the inappropriateness that I feel. That young people have not understood where their rights begin and end in the world. We have a lot of mouthy women that are quick to try to call an old man a bitch from the black hood. And I look at them and I marvel and go, what would you think that Rosa Parks, who sat her ass on that bus for us all, would think of you today? Or what would Martin Luther King say to you as his gentlemanly way did in his sermons that were marvelous? You see, you can't possibly appreciate my white culture and what we did to change our minds about an issue that was really a problem for your culture. But today, you arrogantly walk on the streets as if you own them when you're not working in them, when you're not a student around them, and openly you're just here for the fun of it, the hell of it, and the thrill of it which is marvelous, and you're right. But the minute you cross over into my life, presuming to get too close to me physically, presuming the right to steal from me, then you lose your right to this. In life, you have to know where your boundaries in the world begin and end, and if you pick the wrong player for your life, that's on your life. It's a lesson for your life. In my life, I know what I feel. I know the real love that I feel for someone. And when the Lord has promised me that person for the longest time in the way that I know my life and I know the change that I made in my life and I know the love of God in my life and what I feel is the fortune of my life has been stolen from me by a blackguard man who just liked her looks. You see, there's a difference for me because it's that individual who changed my whole world changed my whole life, changed my life towards a loving Christ, even though I'm pagan. And openly that individual ignited in me the ability to channel in ways that very few people can is sort of true today. And she doesn't understand the magic of Jesus and what God can do today because she's too busy not being willing to see what she's done through me today. But the amazing part about the crack in my voice is the loss I feel of the fortune of my life. 